Hey everyone, I'm Lexi with the Sync Center Help Desk, here to tell you all about our next episode. In this episode, John and I talk about music replacement and all the reasons why it's needed. The episode goes into detail about times the Sync Center has used music replacement to meet their clients' needs. How are songs replaced, you might ask? Well, we use a few different options. We recorder, our music catalog being one. So if you'd like to be entered into this music catalog, be sure to check out the link in our bio to find out how you can submit your music. I learned a ton in this episode, so seriously, you're not going to want to miss this one. Thank you so much to everyone who's giving your feedback. It does not go unnoticed. Can't wait to see you in the next episode. So, just to get started, I like I said, I asked earlier, what is music replacement? Mm-hmm. Yeah, music replacement is a big part of music supervision, Lexi. And this is this this is a great conversation because this is like real world meat and potatoes stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, music replacement is a path you take when your original path proves like it's not going to happen. Like, like if we say, okay, we want Within the project ain't no mountain high enough. Mm-hmm. That's perfect for the, for the use. It's perfect for the film. We need to replace it. And, and what I've done is I'd pull together six common reasons for music replacement that we've mm-hmm. run up against over the, over the last 15 years. Uh, there yeah, may yeah. be more, but these are, these are what like the big ones. Yeah, these are the ones that we see. So I think it's I think it's a worthy conversation and just saying, you know, like these are the six things that you can run up against that may, you know, kind of need something different. Cause you to go another another direction. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So um actually I just realized um I heard this episode of music replacement on the podcast. Um mm like way back when yeah and I yeah. remember yeah I remember thinking like oh that's so like it's like a puzzle it's like putting together oh. it's like trying to figure out like exactly you know, right. how are we gonna make this work without the actual piece we need a similar one <laughs> you just hit on the head it's a puzzle that you need to find you know you need to complete the puzzle and music right. re- re- replacement is that thing that you need to consider and understand that makes it allows you to succeed Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think we, I think we definitely covered that. Like that was a, like you said, I feel like I, it all connected. Like in yeah. that moment, everything made sense. Um, cool. So, um, speaking of these reasons that you would need to replace music, yeah. you mind going into those? Like, yeah. Like what I what I pulled together, Lexi, is like the six super common reasons for music replacement. So, uh, if you like, I can we can just kind of talk through talk through those six i would like yes let's do that (laughs) um so like the first the first reason is the project can't afford it Mm -hmm. the economic reason of you know we've got one hundred and fifty thousand for all the music and now is that a well actually i was gonna say is that a common would you say that's like a common uh budget but I, I know every project is different, so that's yeah. I I think most filmmakers and ad campaigns are sensitive to the economics of it. If you're Microsoft and you don't care, you're just there to spend money and mm-hmm. money, no object, then it doesn't yeah. factor in. But sure. you know, yeah. for for a filmmaker, for for a production company working on a film that goes to Showtime, economics is a is a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, if we've got 150,000 for all the music and one song is saying, look, we're 150,000 minimum just for the one song. Mm-hmm. We can't spend all our budget on the one song cuz we need Yeah. You, you know, won't have there's many. You won't have food to eat. Yeah. So so <laughs> yeah. a big part of what we how we work and how we operate is is this thing called no secrets and no surprises. So we need to get really clear with the production company like is 150,000 really every, you know, is that the whole music budget or is it really 200,000? Cause we need, uh, okay. we need to okay. know 
mm-hmm. we need to we need to be bulletproof because we're yeah. we're budgeting and line item. You're basing everything off of that. Right. And most yeah. most filmmakers are are transparent. But we mm-hmm. that's a big part of us really saying But you have to have that skill. It's a come to Jesus of like, look, if, if we're gonna work on the project, we, you know, we're gonna be totally transparent with you. You, you need to be totally transparent with us, us and budgets. Sometimes people hold a little aside. Okay. Well, we could we could really do two hundred, you know. So mm-hmm. just being transparent with that is important. I mean, in in a in a situation that um, a friend of ours, Jace Everett, who mm-hmm. he did a record on Sony some years ago, and it really didn't do anything. And this they were uh, working on the pilot for True Blood, mm-hmm. and. Okay. The producer tempted in a song by Johnny Cash. And that was kind of their zeitgeist. It kind of inspired the whole spirit of mm-hmm. True Blood. Of what they it was going to sound like. They wrote the pilot to it. They did storyboards to it. So that song oh, was wow. the inspiration for sure. Yeah, total inspiration. So okay. when they went, they said, okay, now we need to get... Johnny Cash and his publisher and his record label to sign off on it. it. It was astronomical. I think he had just passed away. So it was an expensive time in his catalog's history and life cycle. So what they did is they did music replacement. They said, okay, here's Jace Everett. He's got a song that kind of sounds like Johnny Cash. It's got mm-hmm. a baritone voice and it's kind of creepy. And I don't know if you've mm-hmm. seen the show. Yeah. has that like sauntery, like, but, but that song was used on like, eight years of true blood. It was the theme song. So every time it played, yeah. Yeah. Jace made money. Um, and so that's, that's a real world example of can't afford it. Music. We need to consider music replacement. Yeah. Need something like it. Can't, can't afford, afford it. Need something like it. Can't afford Johnny cash, mm-hmm. but Jace Everett just got dropped from Sony. He'll take mm-hmm. 40, grand, you know, whatever it was. I'm just pulling that number out. Right. Of right. Um, so that's that's a scenario that um, you know the the economics of can't afford it, you know. That's yeah. The first yeah. reason, and it's kind of yeah. common because a lot of labels are really precious with their masters, the master side of the license, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's okay. That's you would expect them to. If if you owned the Johnny Cash library, you would want. You'd, <laughs> yeah, you'd, I want. Very- I want to get. That. That what I earn for, the, or yeah, what I need for that's that, right. For sure. Like what, um, it, what it's worth. So that's number one. The first, the first reason is the project can't afford it. Um, mm-hmm. Number two is there's a more affordable option. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, again, say if, say if the budget for the whole project is one hundred fifty thousand, you have to spread that out over the whole project. So mm-hmm. a more affordable option is kind of the second reason. Um, it could be public domain. It could be an indie artist. It could be um, part of what we do. We have a mini catalog called Re-Recorder. So, mm. for example, right. um, like uh, the song Heroes from David Bowie. If you want right. the David Bowie version of it, it's mm-hmm. going to be very right up there. Right. So if you want a more affordable option, that's what kind of why we created the re-recorder catalog is to save money for our clients. Mm-hmm. We could use the David Bowie version, but we can also use our version of Heroes. Mm-hmm. That okay. You have options. You have options. And options. that's that's yeah. how we serve and add value to our filmmakers, right? right. You, you, it's not mm-hmm. just one path. There's seven different paths. Right, right. And you're... you're there's seven different paths and you are providing at least like two or three of them. We're, we're helping them steer through those paths. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, cool. So so that's number two, two, the more affordable option. Right. And number three is really we've run out of time. Okay. If the air date is two weeks from now and maybe we just got brought onto the project, Mm-hmm. you know, at the end, really too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then so, there. 
if, yeah, the, you know, you know, I mean, you've done projects where you've yeah. kind of been I'm thrown. Like, why and, did you wait till now to contact me? And that's super common. Super yeah. common. So, yeah, I so, realized that very quickly. I was like, oh, people wait or like yes. don't think that this like matters until now or like and, that people are going to be available. Or all and that oftentimes stuff. they expect the supervisor to pull a rabbit out of their hat and save the universe. Yeah. They're like, well, this is your job. You can do that. So do and that. Can't <laughs> like, you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. We could if you would have hired us eight months ago, but exactly. the exactly. air date is two weeks out and right. that, like, that air no, date doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's a real, that's a reason for music replacement is you've run out of time. The air date is two weeks from now. And, and just the reality of it is, is we need to get the project done in two weeks to hit that air date. The air date yeah. isn't moving. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's number three. We've, we've run out of time. Mm -hmm. um, number four is, is what I, I would call it, to, it the music or the, the music, the song is a non-essential. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is that it's kind of replaceable. Like, yeah, if, like no one's going to miss it. Yeah. Um, so if you have three must have songs and then another three, maybe nice to have songs, well, those mm -hmm. nice to have songs, you can replace and save some money there. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we call it, you know, there's songs that are important to the project and songs that are interesting. If it's just interesting, mm -hmm. if it's not essential, we can replace it yeah. and, and ship yeah. that money elsewhere. Yeah. So that's that's number four. It, the the song is non essential to the film. Um, number five is a term in the actual sync license itself, and it's called in perpetuity. Mm, yeah. What that means is that when we license that song, we want to mm -hmm. license it forever. Right. We don't want a one year term, which is super common nowadays. Mm. Used to be two year terms. Now it's one year term. Uh, mm. So. As we're uh, recently, we worked on uh, a film for HBO and Showtime, and they they don't want to come back next year and have to upgrade the license and re mm -hmm. negotiate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they like a lot of shows on Netflix have been having that issue where they go to put it on streaming platforms and like they don't have the rights anymore. They have one year term licenses, not in perp. So, in perpetuity is expensive because you're saying, "I want this song forever." It's yeah, not exclusive but... use, but it's practic you know, it's saying it's ongoing forever. If we use mm -hmm. the song in our film, we don't want to come back to you when it goes 50 other places. Right, right. So that is sometimes a reason to consider music replacement because if you're dealing with a super song or you want to use Ain't No Mountain High Enough, in perp is pricey. <laughs> It just sounds like such a tall order. <laughs> it's forever. We want it forever yeah. in all uses. We don't want to come back ever again. We want it. One oh, no. I meant trying to get Ain't No Mountain High Enough for Interpretive. Yeah, I'm using that as a, as a... As an example, no, but it's a good one. It's definitely getting the point across. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so that's number five is in perpetuity can cause you to really rethink and replace some music in your film. And, and the sixth reason is the artist says no this is this is rare but mm -hmm. two two years ago it happened to us where we were working i think it was a spot for subaru it was a campaign in the northeast of the u.s and it was trans-siberian orchestra was the the it's like heavy metal christmas music it's super common at christmas time um, trans-siberia orchestra yeah it's oh, like, I'm gonna need to look into this. Oh yeah, it's it's like gothic heavy metal Christmas songs. It's oh, I love. It okay. sounds silly, okay. but at Christmas time, sounds amazing. Honestly, I need to look into it's, this. It look, like, yeah, they they denied us the use for a, for a hundred and fifty because they wanted to hold out for a national spot of half a million to a million. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, nah, we can do better. Yeah. And that's, like I said, that's rare, but that is a reality when we're talking mm -hmm. about no secrets and no surprises, the artist mm -hmm. can say no. 
Right. You have to be prepared for that, or at least know that it's a possibility. It's a possibility and you, and you have to manage those. Have a backup plan. Yeah. With the, the client to the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the backup plan winds up being the music replacement, which is um, like <laughs> what we're talking about. So yeah. it, it definitely makes all the sense in the world right now. Yeah. So um, then you have to go another, you have to be able to complete the project. Yeah. I got to pull an audible. What's the solution here? Trans Siberia mm -hmm. says no. Do we re record it? Is there something else from an indie artist that is similar? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all those kind of things go into the, the, uh, you know, the conversation. But those are kind of the six, the six reasons that, you know, we've run across over 15 years is can't afford it. Mm -hmm. There's a more affordable option. Mm -hmm. We've run out of times. Number three, it's a non-essential song. It's number four. Number five is in perpetuity. And number six is the artist says no. Well, so, wait a minute. Did I miss number two? I'm like listening. I'm like, wait a minute. What was number two? A, a more affordable option. More affordable option. Okay. Yeah. I was, my brain was combining one and two as one. And I was like, no, nope, that's not right. They kind of, um, they, it, they all kind of, it's a Venn diagram. Like if, if yeah, you could afford I think it. That's, I think that's what it is. I'm like, I'm seeing the progression of yeah. how they all like align, you know? Yeah. And like you said, it's a puzzle, you know, that any one exactly. of these can happen yeah. and you have to be able to think about the solution of, okay, what, what's our next best option? Mm-hmm. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, like but having those a puzzle, are, but like there's three of each piece. Yeah, <laughs> you're just figuring out which version of that piece will work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the things that we've we've run across for music replacement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. that was. I don't know how people are gonna feel when they watch this, but I know for me personally, like. I definitely gained a lot. <laughs> I mean, like, cause I knew, I knew, I knew a little here and there about musical placement and why it would be needed. But I feel like I gained a better understanding of like the specifics of it's, type of situations because you gave I, a lot of good examples. Yeah, no, I mean that's something we talked about is really wanting to keep this real world, um, and it's not sexy. Like, you know, is this? I mean, I feel like. It's not sexy, but it's it's real world stuff that any music supervisor has to have proficiency with, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, maybe as as we we're talking about music replacement, we've gotten a, a bunch of comments from viewers who have. I mean, I know you've gotten a lot. I've gotten a lot, Le Lexi. People mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, I'm really interested in music supervision," or I've I've worked on a film festival project and I need more kind of roadmap on how it really works. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, I think that that is an excellent topic to talk about for sure. I know that that really, I, 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 I just have so many ideas right now. Yeah. I think it's, I, I like can't even. Begin so that's something, I mean, we want to listen to our viewers. So if, if that's something they're interested in let us know in the comments and we're just starting yeah. to think about it we could we could walk through confidential projects that we really can't talk about on youtube you know there's a lot of yeah. things we can do a, a two-week training course so you know long and short if, if that's something you're interested in you can you can sign up in the link below and you know we'll you you know in a month or two we may talk more about that yeah yeah um i definitely <laughs> i definitely have a lot of ideas but i love hearing from the people who um give us feedback because it's yeah. it's honestly so it, i feel like it's such a um relationship being built for one and for two um i'm realizing that a lot of the things that i'm curious about or that i think about are things that other people also you know are curious about i'm like oh okay cool like we were on the same page already but, mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah and there's a lot on the music side about getting your music metadata together yeah yeah your there's a ton of stuff there but on the buy side the music supervisor side 
there's there's not a lot. Yeah, there's not a lot. So yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. I, I this is like how I this is how we even met in the first yeah, place. That's I was right. Just like is a podcast. Okay, cool. Listens to podcasts. Cool. And then you know, oh, everything he's saying makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Let's call him. <laughs> awesome. Um. Yeah. But yeah. But, if if cool. if our viewers want that, they can sign up and we'll we'll loop them in. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. If anybody wants to um to contribute. For sure. Mm -hmm. To any of the topics that we talk about, definitely let us know. It is so helpful. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Cool. So I think I'm good to wrap this up. Um, Well, everybody, there you have it. Um, That was a great conversation, John. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, course. I really appreciate you uh, coming forward with all this amazing information. Like, you're so... uh, well versed and I appreciate it. And I know a lot of our viewers appreciate it too. It's definitely, um, it's a helpful conversation and literally that's what we're here to do. We're here to help. Right. That's right. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to contribute more to the conversation and give us any feedback on what you think that our next conversations should be about, be sure to drop them in the uh, comments below and follow us on all our socials. Uh, (laughs) it's a really great way to connect and, I've enjoyed hearing from everyone. So let's keep it up. Uh, Thank you so much, John. Of course. See See you next time, guys.